Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and this is the first follow up to my DIY ultrasonic cleaner video. If you haven't seen the previous video, there's a link up here so you can check it out. Firstly, Thanks to everyone for all the likes and comments. There's been a great response to the video and some fantastic information left in the comments section. There has also been quite a lot of conflicting information, so now I need to try and filter through it all to separate the good advice from the bad. I should mention that this project has been going on for quite some time. That very first test of the cleaner was actually two years ago, and the updates, repairs and improvements have been quite a gradual process. Since the video was released, I have actually found the causes of many of the issues I've encountered, and I'll be going through all of those in my next follow-up video. The purpose of this video is to address a few of the comments I received. The first is regarding the aluminium foil test I did to indicate whether the cleaner was actually ultrasonically cleaning. The comments stated that the only reason there were pits in the foil were because my cleaner was emitting standing waves and that a cleaner that uses sweeping frequencies where it varies frequency while cleaning would not have the same effect. I really wanted to test this theory, but unfortunately I don't own a cleaner with sweeping frequencies. However, my good friend Jay from the House of Moth YouTube channel does. Hey Bruce, what's going on dude? Hi there Jay, I need you to drop everything and do a quick test with your fancy ultrasonic cleaner. Jay? You there Jay? Hey everybody, Jay here from the House of Moth and Bruce from Brankus Creations has asked me to run a little test on my ultrasonic cleaner or rather in my ultrasonic cleaner. What we're going to do is take a piece of aluminum foil, cut it the size of the basket of my ultrasonic cleaner, put it in there, run the cleaner for one minute and see what happens to the foil. Now, why am I doing this if Bruce has two cleaners himself and is perfectly capable of doing this test himself as well? Good question. The theory is that the more expensive cleaners that have sweeping frequencies do not cause standing waves and therefore will not eat holes through aluminum foil. And we're going to test that right now. So I'm going to find the neatest piece of aluminum foil I can, try not to wrinkle it so that whatever happens in the cleaner will be perfectly visible by the time we're done. All right, as it turns out, cutting aluminum foil without wrinkling it up is really freaking hard. So this is the best I could do. Uh, it's very smooth still. I know it doesn't look that way with all the reflections and stuff, but we're going to put this in the basket, submerge it, make sure it stays at the bottom, and then we're going to run a one minute test. Took your hands free for a moment. This is my cleaner. It is a Crest Ultrasonics 1200D-45. The 45 suggests that this runs at 45 kilohertz. It is a very wide cleaner, but it's not very deep. And this is perfect for the kind of boards that I work on on a daily basis, which is more of the modern Intels. Quick look inside the cleaner. I don't know if it's easy to tell, but that's the bottom of the basket. I didn't manage to uh, crumple it up too bad. Now I have to lower the basket and submerge the foil so we can run the test and see what happens. Here we go. this camera back up and let's see what happened if anything we give it a second to drip out they'll take the foil out put it down dry it off and we'll check out the results all right I've adjusted the camera angle so you can see me take the foil out because I really don't want any 
cuts in the video or anything that could make people doubt that this was not the test exactly how it went down. Now let me step behind the camera. Pretty significant damage. So let me put this down and we'll take a closer look. All right, here we are with the foil on the table. Now, you saw this go into the cleaner perfectly smooth. Well, smooth-ish, but look at the damage this cleaner did. Let me try and absorb some of the liquid here. All right, there we go. So from this, uh, this is the bottom side. This was at the bottom when it was in the cleaner, as you can see by the little mesh pattern that the the basket left behind but look at this it really chewed up that tin foil pretty good okay now i'm not going to be able to get this all in one frame but the results are pretty clear this tin foil got chewed up so there you have it even very expensive cleaners with sweeping frequencies by the way this has a sweeping frequency of three kilohertz in either direction if i read the documentation right so it'll uh, it'll baseline at 45 kilohertz then go up and down three kilohertz throughout the cleaning process as to avoid standing waves uh, and all that stuff obviously doesn't matter one bit this cleaner at the time of purchase was twelve hundred dollars Right now, it's on eBay at the time of making this video for $1,700. If I had known then what I know now, I would have gone with the $200 ultrasonic cleaner from eBay. Because it gets the job done just as well and sure doesn't cost as much. Thanks so much for that, Jay. Please check out the great content on his channel. Links are in the description. The next comment I'd like to address relates to the transducers all emitting waves of the same frequency. Several people commented that as I add more transducers, they'll start cancelling each other out, reducing efficiency of the cleaner rather than increasing it. Now I'm no scientist, but I didn't think sound worked that way. This would mean that if I were to set up two speakers next to each other, both playing the same frequency sound, the result would be silence as one speaker would cancel the other out. But this is not the case. It's my understanding that the way to cancel out sound is if the second speaker is reversing the amplitude of the wave from the first speaker in the same way that noise cancelling headphones work. But, as I mentioned, I'm not a scientist, so I can't really check this one with theory. However, I can check it with a practical experiment. The experiment is a pretty simple one. I have the ability to isolate the pairs of transducers in the cleaner, so I can run it with two, four, six or eight transducers at once. So I have cut four pieces of foil to the size of the cleaner tub and will run each of them for 60 seconds. The first piece of foil with two transducers running, the second with four, the third with six and the last with eight. Will we see a gradual increase in the pitting of the foil or will we see it reduce as I start using more transducers? And now for the results. Here is a clean sheet of foil to use as our control. Here is the first piece of foil with just two transducers running. You can clearly see the pitting is focused more around this area, the location of the two transducers I was using. For the next piece of foil, you can definitely see an increase in the pitting when using four transducers. I used the four centre ones. Now to six transducers, a further increase in the pitting and it's pretty clear which six transducers I was using. And finally, we have all eight transducers operating. We have a further increase in the pitting and a nice spread all the way across the foil. The foil was getting very close to the transducers on the edges, which is why the effect is more pronounced there. This experiment is pretty basic, and I realize it doesn't properly quantify the actual increase in cavitation. However, it should remove any suggestions that increasing the number of transducers is actually reducing the efficiency.
For anyone considering building their own cleaner, please look out for my next video where I check out some different ultrasonic drivers and put them through their paces. Plus, I finally find out why the drivers have been failing, and I'll show you what I did to make this cleaner reliable. That one's coming real soon. If you have any thoughts about these experiments, please leave them in the comments, and please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.